my name is Rebecca Powers with SLCT and here's what's happening in Sterling and Lancaster. The Lego Club meets every Wednesday at the Thayer Memorial Library from 4 to 5 p.m. For more information, contact Susan Conroy at 978-368-8928 extension 5 or email sconroy at cwmars.org. Big Truck Night will be held Wednesday, July 22nd from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. in the Thayer Memorial Library's Weir parking lot. The night will host large trucks, emergency vehicles, magic shows, and a petting zoo. For more information on what's happening in Lancaster, here is Lancaster Town Administrator Ryan McNutt. Thank you, Rebecca. So let me bring you up to speed on where we are with the Prescott Building. The Prescott building renovations are currently underway and you're going to see construction happening throughout the next year and a half. Right now, we're currently doing the environmental abatement on the building, which means that we have a hygienist this inside and they are remediating the asbestos, which can be in the tiles, it can be in the walls, it can be in all different types of materials within the building but we have to get that out of there before any future construction can happen for health reasons. The next stage of the process will be selecting the general contractor who will start construction at the beginning of 2016. Construction should run roughly the entire year and then we expect to be able to occupy a substantially completed building in early 2017. The Prescott building at that point will become a town hall annex and a museum for artifacts that our Town Historic Commission has diligently worked to preserve. The second uh, initiative that I'd like to talk about is our Town Solar Program. We're very fortunate here in Lancaster that two years ago we were able to build our own solar array. This is completely owned by the Town of Lancaster and it provides revenue for the Town but it also provides another unique program where we are able to aggregately negotiate the power rates for all of the citizens of Lancaster. So on one level, we get free power for our municipal buildings. The government of Lancaster pays no money for its electricity, but we can also lower the residential rate beyond what other towns may pay for electricity. So you may see your electric rate here in Lancaster two, three, four cents cheaper than in other parts of the Commonwealth. And we're very happy that that is able to provide you with a measure of financial security. And it's something that uh, we hope to be able to expand into the future and continue to find savings for uh, the residents of Lancaster. I'd like to give you some information about the town's aggregation program. If you're new in town or if you've been unaware of the program, there are ways. You should be automatically opted into this rate saving program, but you know, being a program with many thousands of beneficiaries, there could be glitches. So let me provide you with the contact information should you have any questions or you desire to opt into the program or opt out of the program. You may enter or leave this aggregation program at any time during the year. The number to call is either my number here at Town Hall, 978-365-3326, extension 1302, that directly reaches me or calling 508-485-5858. That is the coordinator that we have that manages the program on a day-to-day -day basis, and they would be uh, able to answer any questions that you have and facilitate uh, whether you'd like to enter this program or leave this program. And now back to you. Thanks, Ryan. The Town of Sterling is seeking eager volunteers to help fill open spots on boards and committees in town. For a list of open positions and how to apply, visit the Sterling website www.sterling-ma.gov. Digital magazines and newspapers are now available at the Conant Public Library. This new collection includes popular materials such as The New Yorker, Reader's Digest, Cosmopolitan, and many more. For more information, contact the library at 978-422-6409. There will be Well Adult Clinics on Tuesday, July 7th from 8 to 9 a.m. and on Wednesday, July 15th from 11 a.m. to noon at the Lancaster Community Center. For more information, contact the Neshoba Board of Health at 978-772-3335.
Well, I've been talking a lot today about uh, summer, and of course, along with summer comes fantastic food. With fantastic food, sometimes comes a lot of calories. And uh, th there comes a point that we really have to, uh, have to get that under control. And so while well, we're talking today to Alex Grebener at the uh, Sterling uh, Conant Public Library um, about her cookbook club. And uh, every month you feature a different cookbook that people cook from. And of course, of great interest this month is this book, Skinny Taste Cookbook. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about the cookbook club. How does this work? It, we meet once a month, the last Wednesday of the month, and we choose a different book each month. Everybody checks it out and chooses one recipe. And then when we meet, everybody brings that one recipe that they've prepared, and you get to sample a whole bunch of different recipes from the same cookbook. That sounds fantastic. It is. It's a lot of fun and a lot of great food. Now, how do you choose the books? We, I just look for things that have been popular that we can get copies of, pictures, people like pictures. Uh, so we do a wide variety. Now, I noticed with Skinny Taste, this is a book that uh, came off of a blog. And, uh, of course, the food blogs are so are so very uh, popular right now and yes. uh, yeah people we, are just we try to do a, a variety we've done some blogs we've done some of the popular cooks and chefs that you've seen on TV we sure. do a whole bunch of different things now how many people tend to come to these uh, do you get a good turnout we do get a good turnout um, the average is about eight people we've had times that we've had wait lists of 15 people yeah. um, so it, it changes by the month depending on how busy people are so you also have a good opportunity to really sample a number of a number yes. of great dishes you yeah, definitely yeah. do, and people bring takeout containers because there's so much food you get to bring some home with you sure, too. Sure, sure. Now how do people, uh, do you have to register for this? How do you get involved? You do have to register because we have a, a fairly small space. Um, you can just come into the library, check out the book, you can call as well. Mm -hmm. And we do send out an email beforehand and get all the recipes gathered so we don't have 10 of the same thing. Sure. So, you, so you're guaranteed a nice variety. Now is there facilities for say warming things up or, is, or, or are you looking for things that can be served at room temperature or what? We do have a microwave. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a refrigerator. We've had some ice cream desserts that we've put in there until dessert time. Uh, for the most part, people bring things already warmed up and ready to go, but we can microwave. Mm -hmm. And I guess that uh, you probably look at doing things seasonally as well, I imagine. We do. Uh, you know, I know with, and, and certainly now looking at this book, which I took a look at it yesterday, the, the recipes are not only healthful, but they tend to be really light and focus on, of course, the bounty of the season, like great tomatoes and fruits and, you know, seafood and all kinds of things. So. Yes, we do try to, summer we pick things with a lot of vegetable dishes, fruits, fresh ingredients that you might have in your own garden. Um, at winter we've done a Christmas book at Christmas time. Right. Um, and Thanksgiving also we did things that had a lot of vegetable sides that you might use, something different at Thanksgiving, so we do try to pick things that go with the time. Now, how did you luck out to do this? Are you a foodie yourself? I love to cook, I love to bake, and so I just lucked out that I get to do it. Yeah, and do you yourself bring things from the I cookbooks do. I as well? I do, I bring something every time. Um, this month I'm bringing the Mongolian beef and broccoli, which was Wonderful. a huge hit at my house. I've tried a few of the recipes in this book, so it's it's one of my favorites so far. Right, and now this month, this uh, session is, what's the date? Of June 24th June 24th. at 6.30. And we do have a few spots left. In right. July, we're doing something different. We're doing two books. One is all baking, so people who prefer to bake than cook. Mm -hmm. And one is cooking, so you can choose which one you'd rather take. Sounds absolutely yummy, yes. and I can't wait to come and indulge. Thanks Great. so much, Alex. You're welcome. The Lancaster Town Forest Committee is seeking individuals to help manage and promote Blood Forest. Responsibilities will include planning events, mapping, and expanding the trail network overseeing harvests and working to keep the land protected. If you're interested or have questions, contact Tim Kastner, thkastner at comcast.net. Registration for Storytime at the Conant Public Library begins July 6th. To register your child, contact the library at 978-422-6409. Healthcare and health is something that we're all concerned about and no matter how wonderful our health is at any given moment, there are going to be times in life that we all have our challenges. I'm here today with Susan West and she has just written a wonderful book called Walking with Vaija and this is a book, the subtitle here is A Journey into Ayurveda and Preventative Medicine. Susan, this is just a wonderful book. First of all, welcome to the segment. Thank you for speaking with me. Thank you for having me. And I'm interested in how this book came about and what it's about. 
This book is something that I felt compelled to write. Um, I have, like many people, had my share of health issues over the years and always, always, always looking for more, looking for preventative medicine. I happened to work at an Ayurvedic center and that was a big catalyst for change for me. Um, the book comes about because I received a message from Abijah. I had a very great opportunity to work with her and learn about Ayurveda. And I know that this isn't something that we're very big on in America yet. I don't think a lot of people know about it. So the book is really just giving what I learned to others. Now, what is Avija? Avija is the equivalent of a physician, an American Western physician. Um, their training is pretty much medical and they also learn something called the Vedas, which are thousands of year old medical treaties that have been passed down in India. And so every Vaja will learn medicine, um, anatomy, nutrition, and all of the Ayurvedic principles. Okay. Now I noticed that the book is uh, really written in two parts. Uh, the first is both a description and a critique of the American or Western medical model. And then you go into the Ayurvedic uh, principles. Now, this, this must have taken an enormous amount of, of research and time on your part. Um, yes, Vaishya Vadika was the expert on the Ayurvedic side. She made the charts to help people understand a lot of the principles. I took over for the American medical side to do that research and find out what we have available today because it seems like it's very complicated. Everyone has a different kind of health insurance. There's um, a lot of different procedures and treatments out there, but the history is short. We've only been here for a few hundred years, so it was very easy to study um, how we started our American medicine, how that came about, the education that we give our doctors and, and somewhat. One of the points that you make in this is that in Western medicine, we equate the word medicine with a prescription, with an over-the-counter medication, and this really differs from Ayurvedic principles. Um, can you just talk briefly about that? That's a great point. Um, people equate medicine here with drugs or prescription. I have to go get medicine. They usually mean going to the pharmacy, but medicine um, all over the world is a big, there's an overall um, medical mode or medical model that many different countries use, many different types of medicine. There's so many facets that we can all use but here in America, we're very um, keyed into that treatment and procedures and Western medical drug aspect of it. So um, sometimes you need more. A drug is certainly helpful in so many cases, but there's also um, a great preventative side to medicine and there are alternative medicines. Like Now, Ayurveda comes from the Hindu tradition, is that correct? Yes, it does. Yes. Now, how have you found that Ayurveda has um, impacted your own health and your own well-being? For me, I definitely lack preventative medicine. I was always waiting till after the fact, when I had some kind of an ailment, to run to a doctor and get a pill or a treatment or a cream. And they were treating the same things over and over and over after the fact. Ayurveda has really taught me how to avoid a lot of that repetitive process by putting behaviors in place that are preventive medicine. You also talk a lot here about food and there are recipes and uh, so definitely what we consume is a huge, has a huge impact on our health as well. Absolutely. Um, Ayurveda is very big on nutrition daily lifestyle changes, and um, detoxification. Well, this is a marvelous book. And uh, Susan, how can people get this? How can people find it's it? It's available um, in book form and Kindle on Amazon.com. So Amazon.com, you can find this. So um, I urge you, if you are looking at some 
new and different ideas for how to deal with uh, not only chronic ailments, but also just how to maintain health and uh, how to stay as health healthy as possible. I do urge you to take a look at this. It's called Walking with Vija, and it's written by our own Susan West here from Sterling. And Susan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. The Thayer Memorial Library will be hosting the Science Magic Show with Steve Lechner and Bananas Wednesday, July 15th at 2 p.m. Participants will experience science in a fun and educational way. Learn to become a responsible babysitter at the UMass 4-H Babysitters course. This course takes place on Thursday, July 16th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Thayer Memorial Library. Pre-registration is required. To register or for more information, contact Susan Conroy at 978-368-8928, extension 5, or email sconroy at cwmars.org. The Clinton Public Library will be hosting a summer ramble with Henry Thoreau, Saturday, July 11th at 2 p.m. This event begins with crafts and then a trolley ride to Rosher Farm and finishes with a stroll in the woods. For more information, call the library at 978-365-4160. I'm Rebecca Powers, and that's what's happening. If you have a local event you'd like to see on this program, contact SLCT. SLCT is looking for more volunteers to help with filming and editing. If you know someone interested, have them contact us at 978-733-733. 1139 or email slc.tv810 at gmail.com. We'd like to remind you to find us on Facebook and YouTube.